welcome all over the world. And let's bring in the man who is from all over the world, Mike from around the world. Mike, are you there? Mike from around the world, are you there? Pastor Paul Megley. There I am. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. As soon as I dialed in, your system went kapoof. Is that when it happened? I mean, <laughs> well, they knew you were coming on. I mean, uh, we announced it, of course, the, you were here, here on Tuesday. And then we did a promo uh, video yesterday. I noticed it had over 22, 23,000 views. So a lot of folks were planning on coming to hear this show today live. And, of course, thousands more will listen to it on the archives. It's great to have you. You always cause trouble. Yes, I'm quite controversial. Yes. I know that. But it's good to be here. Good to be here. Mike, matter of fact, speaking to that, why don't you, uh, look, and you've been, you, the Lord led you our direction. We've been talking with you. You've been a guest many times. You, COT, the Worldwide Network, you're tapped into our show every day. You, you broadcast our show live on your network every day. We appreciate it so greatly. And I've had a chance to meet a lot of your COT followers. I've baptized several of them. I mean, quite a few, actually. Mike, tell people what you can about who you are and, 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 and you work for the government, I know, but can you, what can you share with us a little bit about your background? Background? Well, I have a background in electronic engineering. Um, I also have a background in certain physics disciplines. And um, the other portion of the backgrounds, well, that's a, we'll leave that alone, but uh, I have a background with the engineering sector of uh, things like magnetic memory and um, things of that nature, engineering around that. And so that would be my area of expertise. Um, I guess you could equate that to certain defense things and um, uh, offensive and defensive things. Um, how things are able to see and guide themselves. And I, have, I spent a lot of time in uh, White Sands a long time ago, uh, working on uh, several projects. So, you know, it's a, it's a career basically in the technical aspect of things, which allows me to, uh, I have hands on with um, quite a few systems. Um, and, um, but due to my love of the Father, it's a, it's, a, it's a careful thing that I do because when I look at the prophecies and then I look at the people and, um, you know, people just have a natural imagination. But the severity of the prophecies is somewhat, uh, uh, let's just say the outcome could be a little different than what most of us conclude, having been exposed to certain phenomena, right? Uh, it's it's just not a joke, you know. It's not a joke, and it's something that um, takes mental and spiritual preparation. You know, we're given a lifetime to to do this, and um, I, I just wouldn't want to see people squander their lifetime in in full of doubts and things of that nature. And then when the trouble does come, uh, you know, they fall on their knees and say, "Well, I wasn't ready for this," because all too often I've been in so many scenarios and situations where people were not ready. You know, they had the training, they had everything they needed, but when they actually stepped into the situation, uh, men cried. Some men couldn't take it because it was, um, it, it was too real, right? It was too real. And when you deal, when you uh, begin to read into prophecies, you begin to find out quite a few things, um, ancient things that have been here, that are still here, hidden from the public's view. You find out things like the Archaeological co uh, Congress. Um, you, you see how the inner workings of things do work. You know, these are not classified things. It's just that people don't ask the right questions. The knowledge is on the internet, but it's buried within a bunch of propaganda. Right. And, um, you know, I'm just one of those people who deep, I'm deeply concerned about any, any person that the Lord does love. I'm going to be concerned about them. Right. I'm going to do what I can for them. Because to serve them is to serve the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. And so that's just my heart. 
Well, I can say right now my background is in that uh, technical field and dealing with, uh, well, a lot of technical things, a lot of engineering uh, things, you could say. Right. And some and of them do get close to a fringe type of engineering, but, uh, you know, that's what I can see right now. Okay. So, again, uh, you, uh, and as folks is and, and Mike, of course, under confidentiality and, and under a lot of stuff he's classified, cannot say. But the things that he can say has been very helpful uh, with, uh, and, and I know over the last four or five years, there's been so many of these things that you, that you said, look, you got to look for this to, to start happening, look for this to start happening, and, and of course, they've come to pass, every one of them, including uh, now, again, confirmation on this on these waves of energy. It's not just BP Earthwatch capturing it on three different uh, mechanisms of, uh, of measure, uh, but it was uh, Dutch Sense capturing it on a, uh, that just blew his mind, and we've all seen those videos. But it's also now even NASA saying, NASA had to come out and say something about these waves of energy. There's just too much information. There's just You can't hide it. There it is. There's a wave. So NASA says, yep, there's galactical waves. They're gamma rays. They're just, their narrative of what's causing it is not the same as maybe, you know, your narrative or others. And that is, they're trying to talk about these gamma rays coming from a, a, a star that's been ripped apart by a black hole instead of uh, a binary system, Planet X, Planet 7X, Nibiru, whatever you want to say, that will that's shaking these heavens and causing this galactical cosmic waves. There's no question we're having. So, Mike, have you had a chance to see Dutch Sense's video and BP Earthwatch's video? I did look at um, the video. Somebody sent me a clip of the uh, of. of Dutch census, the individual you were talking about, uh, yeah. the relevant area. And he did capture that on the high band of, um, uh, he had a graphic of that. I did see a, por a portion of BP's uh, narrative concerning that also. So both of them uh, observed this. I, you know what's so difficult is um, when you know something is coming, how in the world do you get Christians? to open their minds enough to say, okay, this is plausible, I have to prepare for it. So Pastor Paul, for the last four or five years, I've been giving purposed hints. Now the folks at COT know this. In 2015, I gave them a, a word, right? Which was full stop. I gave them a word, full stop. Well, wouldn't you know it after they got the word and I told them to remember that full stop. So then, a year after that, President Obama was at this, um, I think it was 2015, it could have been early 2015, after that, President Obama was talking to international leaders of the world, right, giving a speaking in front of all of them. And then outside of his speech, and anybody can go back and look at this, outside of his speech, guess what he uttered? Out of the blue, he uttered full stop. That's what he uttered. Now that was a hint to get people, I was trying to get people, but certainly those who listen to me, to say, listen, I'm not speaking hogwash, and the circumstances that are coming are not something to play with, something to joke around with. You have to be mentally and physically prepared for this. Um, you have to be spiritually prepared. Right. Or any mental or physical uh, uh, preparedness won't mean a hill of beans. Right. And so I gave them that hint uh, concerning this wave, uh, early in, uh, let's see, when was that? That was uh, June or July, somewhere around there. I told them that mid-October, we were going to see a shock wave, right? Yeah, you did. Yes, you did. And that was a little hint. Yeah, and then so that shock wave hits. It hit. So these are hints so that, uh, you know, because I don't like to be lifted up in front of anybody. That's, I know that's that. not the object here. The object here is that people understand uh, that these things are coming through. They, they will absolutely come through. And it's going to change over the course of time. Everything is going to change. And it's quite serious. So with the hints, my prayer was that someone, someone would capture the information, uh, discern it spiritually, um, and think about it, give it serious thought, and be prepared in case they're, they are um, living 
once the the uh, uh, peak of this thing comes through, so that they won't have a heart attack from all the changes in the world. So, Mike, they so, are coming. okay, so we understand your motivation and, and your integrity of making sure people are warned. So let's talk about the wave, okay? December 26th, this is when the second one, I think you used the word uh, full, full threshold. Tell us what, what you see happening as it's approaching and as we're, we're, it's now December 26th, 27, 28, and so on. What kinds of change, everything's gonna change. So what types of events will start taking place on the earth? From December to February, um, once we cross that threshold, we're going to have a, um, almost like what the sun is doing now, what we have now with the sun is a negatively charged solar stream uh, hitting us, is what we have now. It, the polarization of what's coming in is, is, um, is, is sustaining the absorption uh, of the uh, solar winds with the, uh, compared to the atmosphere. and so. December, January, and February, we're going to see a 0.3 increase. Um, once we cross that threshold, we're going to have, let's just give it a level of, um, I, I put a, I, I have a chart with a level that will be updated um, in a very special section of the COT site. And, uh, but I'll give, I'll make sure you have access to it and, and um, other folks will have access to it. But December on that scale from 1 to 20, we're at a 0.3 in December. Now that may seem minuscule to most, but we've been at point zero zero, whatever. You know, we've been right. really low concerning cosmic uh, radiation. So is radiation. So, a, it, so it's radiation uh, levels that we've already seen. I think BP Earthwatch said we've seen a twelve point four increase in radiation level upon the Earth in the last twelve months. You're saying we're going to see a lot higher levels of radiation. Yes, and and other types of um, different types of radiation are going to be inbound, and and the phenomena is explained like this: our our the sun, the sun itself, has a very large um, magnetic field, right? Yeah. And so it has what's called a heliospheric current sheet at, at the outside of the solar system, and what has been happening over time is that uh, heliospheric current sheet. Um, it, it, it's a zone, that zone is polarized, right? So it directs these cosmic uh, charged particles that come in, it kind of, it, it's kind of like a highway. They'll ride the edge of that skirt, right? What's been happening is it's flattening out and those cosmic rays are just penetrating right through and they're com they keep coming through. This process began in 2007 up until the current day, and they're building a number. So we know we have a problem with the heliosphere current sheet. It, it's really allowing so many things to come in. Because the sun changes polarity, right, it, it keeps at bay all these charged particles because it switches polarity, kind of like AC circuitry over, over a long period of time. So it keeps charged particles back. So here's the key phrase in this. The um, uh, magnetic field of the sun is responsible for pushing back charged particles, right? Yeah. Pushing back. Yep. But yep. what we have here, and one of the elements we're watching, is, is the solar minimum and spike down periods of the sun's activity. Sunspots right now are good for us. They're very good for us. And that means that the sun is still awake. Because what normally happens is this. You have these sunspots which indicate solar activity, right? right Just right. like we have now. But we know during that solar activity, though we may have geometric storms and things of that nature, it's still pushing things out away from the Earth. We know this. It's pushing it away from the Earth. But in years like 1985 to 1987, where there were no no winds or anything popping out of the sun. And then, of course, 1996 to 1997, and then again in 2009, what we had was uh, a minimum value in the sun's activity, and cosmic rays were pouring in, right? 2009 was a very different year. In fact, 2009 is when most of the health problems began to form. And if somebody's a nurse or, or you run statistics, 
Just look at 2009, look at the comparison between 2005, 2009 and after, and you're going to see a vast comparison of an increase in cancer, an increase in some of the old diseases that are cancer-based, anything concerning uh, radiation people had greater symptoms of. So you're and saying, then, uh, okay, so I'm trying to understand from a layman's standpoint, you're saying that the, the CMEs coming off the sun actually kind of help in holding back the radiation that's coming from this wave, these waves of energy. Yeah, they do. They're they're good for the solar system. In fact, yeah. it's a it's a it's a very dynamic and beautiful system the way God designed it. Because without solar flares shooting off the sun, without those solar winds that 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 are can be deadly, without those we would be goners. We couldn't survive. It, that wow. these cosmic, that those cosmic rays would overwhelm the Earth's uh, magnetic shielding, and then we're kaput. We're done for. So here we, we go. All fry so it's, and burn. Okay, but look at this balance here. This balancing act. So too much of the of the sun's CMEs can fry power grids, can mess up satellites, and can also cause earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on the Earth. Too much of it. That's but right. but without right. it, the galactical rays, the co the gamma rays, the cosmic rays, the or or I should say waves of energy that are coming will have a deeper impact of radiation and what have you. So we need some of this to help balance that. But I'm hearing you say right. that. But I'm hearing you say that the overall wave of energy is coming so great that even the normal activity of the sun won't be enough. Is that what I'm hearing? That's right. It, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a little more intense than, than usual, just like that magnetar uh, wave, that shock wave that came through in 2004. Same thing. That scared a lot of people. That's when the global warming issues is, is a cover for some of the devastations these exploding stars cause. But um, these this cosmic radiation that has been at an all-time high since a, since they started recording this um, for about 50 years, and and 2007 2009 was a keystone uh, marker in that they they had the ace. Um, they, they sent out some probes out there to actually look at this the heliosphere and. Um, Boy, the readings were not good, and they're becoming worse and worse and worse. And so what we're going to begin to experience are, in the past, we've had what's called air showers, right? And okay. cosmic rays cause air showers. And what this is, is that the secondary particles, when they hit the uh, atmosphere of the Earth, um, they begin to do things to satellites and things of that nature. Now, keep in mind, one single, one single element, one single heavy nuclei, or one single proton, right? Going at that speed, if it hits a circuit board in one of the satellites, it can, it can disable that satellite. Right? Wow. If it hits the right circuit board, it can disable, this is just one. And so this is also why they, they, uh, they, they choreograph spacewalks on the ISS so that the, um, uh, if, if, and they have these charged particle uh, directions spectrometers so that they can really calculate when the astronauts can go out there and do what they have to do. Because if they get caught in um, without protection in this area, they're gonna they're gonna begin to absorb lots of milliservants. And which is milliservants is a um, uh, equivalent biological dose of radiation that they use to measure what a person can take before it affects you biologically. And by the way, we absorb about um, uh, an average in the space station they normally absorb under good conditions about 80 for a six month uh, period. And um, okay. uh, so, but something is changing. The, the rate is, is gone up too high. The rate is going up, and they know this. So they're going to have a lot of changes in what they do. Now, over the coming years, you're going to see something's going to go wrong with the ISS, right? Okay. They're going to have to pull those astronauts from the ISS back down to Earth. We will see this coming up. When you do see this, you're going to know that uh, the radiation has overwhelmed operations up there. Do you Another think thing we will see. Okay, go ahead. There's problems with satellites, problems with satellites, and it won't be caused by solar activity, though they may blame it on solar activity. 
right? Or they may say it's old. But we're going to see a lot of those uh, satellites. If you can catch it, because Air Force Command is responsible for getting rid of those. But if you can catch it, you're going to start to see more and more satellites uh, spoken of coming out um, from orbit. So do you think and it's going to be because of these these high speed uh, protons, protons. And high speed heavy nuclei. Okay, in. so high speed protons, uh, and so and I would say if they pull those those astronauts off that international space station, they're going to give us a spin, don't you think? That okay, our mission's over. We're moving on now to Mars or or something else. I mean, will they put an explanation out there? Of course they will. Right. Of course they will, because they don't want to. Uh, you see, if something is that uh, close, if they have to pull them because of radiation, then a lot of people would automatically know, and they'd say, wait a minute, that's too close. That's too close to the surface. And how did it penetrate that far? What do that you means something is wrong with our shielding if it you, penetrates that far. Do you see CERN playing any role in the waves of energy? It, maybe it, could CERN, Are they trying to use CERN in some way to help help create another star mentality, uh, some way to create another shield? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. That's going to be a conversation within itself. I know okay. that people are, um, we have been directed to look, the public, I'm saying we as a public, directed uh, to look at CERN based on their experimentation, right? That they're going to somehow open up some black holes and portals. They will cause an imbalance, right? But the, the alternative media has been focused on uh, portal openings, you know, things of uh, other dimensions and things of that nature, which are partly right, partly wrong, in my I'm looking, partly right and partly wrong. But that's not the basis of what we should be looking at. Um, the imbalance is what we should look at, and I was hoping that that... Um, that um, that little presentation I did, and I didn't add part two because it got too complicated, but that presentation would have opened the eyes of a few people to let them know something about balance. And, and here's what that basically means. One of the major components in CERN, right, is not the collision detection system, okay. but that they can direct high energy, high speed particles. Protons. A high-speed proton is essentially a cosmic ray, and they're they're also messing with ions, right? Ion is a is a they're, they're, they're uh, heavy ions, right? Which is charged. All of these are charged particles. So guess what? The true breakthrough is this: they can direct charged particles with magnetics. See, while everybody else was looking at the collision, they can direct charged particles. What's about to happen to us? A lot of charged particles are going to be coming in, just like these auroras they're talking about, right? They're talking about that people are going to see through this uh, geomagnetic storm auroras, correct? Yeah. And we could see some electrical problems and this, that, and the other. Well, the Earth automatically directs, like a highway, high-energy particles to the north and to the south pole okay. because they follow those field lines, right? So then we know charged particles follow field lines. CERN can make powerful field lines. They can direct all those cosmic rays with that same principle wherever they want to do it at. They can also mitigate the circumstances if they wanted to over the entire place of Switzerland, if they so desired, right? Switzerland wow. and, and, and some other countries, if they so desired. So effectively, through CERN, they can protect that area yeah. from radiation. They can deflect. They absolutely can. They can all, there you go. It's, it's, it's transferring the uh, energy that's inundating the planet by deflecting it from certain areas, which obviously, I think if you have an underground bunker, an underground city, you probably want, and that's why there's a lot more than just the CERN machine in Geneva, Switzerland. There's, there's a lot of CERN machines out there, but it, it would seem to me like you would, you would try to protect anywhere you have an underground city because the elitists are going away. And there's no question. Mike, I think you brought it up before. There's scientists that, and, and, and there's scientists, there is people involved that are missing. They're just they're disappearing. They're going away. You know, are they on vacation? Are they, are they in the French Riviera? Where'd they go? You know, they're dead? Really? 
I mean, can you help us understand? Has there been already an exodus of politicians, government employees, scientists? Are they fleeing into the rocks and the mountains? Are they are they doing what Revelation said they'll do? The rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, the bond men, uh, they're going to flee into the rocks and mountains to hide. Has this begun? You know, my, I'm a Lepengue Pastor Paul. Over the, over the course of the last, uh, certainly the 15-year mark, we have seen so many um, people who have made real differences in the world vanish. We have seen people that um, absolutely are just geniuses in the financial world vanish. We have seen microbiologists. They were the first ones to go missing. Microbiologists. And not too many people report that microbiologists started missing before the year 2012. Wow. They just started going missing, and they've been going missing ever since 2012. So microbiology, why would anybody want to kill? They were saying that these microbiologists were being killed, right? Strange right. car accidents, right? Uh, murders, and but nobody ever saw the bodies. No. So why would you want a microbiologist? Because that would be essential in an underground base. When you're digging into the ground, there are different pathogens that are in the ground. And you have to have microbiologists to adjust the physiology to new conditions, right? Because okay. you don't want to go crazy under there. No. And you have to analyze and study a great many things. So the best ones have vanished. Why is that? The best of all people are vanishing. People who made major discoveries are vanishing. They say they're, they're dying and everything else, but people are finding out, well, this person died, but you can't contact the family or the spouse, right? Right. You, you can't see with a person. You can't. You 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 don't see articles written about these people as to who they were. No. Who Matter was this fact. person? Matter Who's fact. behind telling how wonderful this person was? Where are they at? Normally, when somebody dies of that type of influence, somebody's going to step up behind them and say, "This person was a wonderful person." This, that, and the other. There would be a sizable investigation, but that's not what's happening. No. Matter of fact, my. Mike, to speak to this, I truly believe that this wave of cremation, you know, which is take, basically changing the way uh, funerals and and uh, putting uh, putting people to rest, has changed to this uh, a massive amount of cremation that's going on, uh, and with no services, no memorials, no services, cremation uh, is is a a nice cover for. The global elitists, the Luciferians, the New World Order, to softly, gently slip away. Uh, you know, they can even have a memorial service. They can have an empty box sitting there or whatever, but you'll never see the body because I don't think all these folks are dying either. I think this is, oh, a lot of people are being cremated, but what a great covering if you're trying to put some people underground and, and start building underground cities. That's right. And there are a lot of people out there that they, they die every day. They end up in morgues every day, and nobody knows who these people are. They could be cremating them, switching. Who knows? But it is a wonderful cover. Because you couldn't tell the public, well, we just recruited this person uh, to go somewhere, and you can't know where they are. Because the entire populace of the earth would say, well, where are they sending them? Right. Right. So then the person, it's easier to say the person died, the person was shot, the person committed suicide, the person is just flat out missing. In fact, the missing story, um, because too many people have access to the Internet now, they quit doing the missing thing. Have you noticed people are not missing like they used to be missing? Right? right now they're just dead or they committed suicide yeah. or they died under strange circumstances yeah and that's it or they just happened to be in an airplane that exploded that right? or, or an airplane that, that just nature. or an airplane that just went missing and we can't find the airplane or you know what I'm saying this right. is and, and and you know I remember when the plane uh, that uh, went missing and had the 20 people on it that work for um, I forgot the name of the company now but it was a they made microchips and semi and semi conductors out of Texas yeah. out of Texas yeah. and six of 20 of the people on there had extreme intellectual property uh, knowledge of the semiconductors and the and the uh, and the sensors that the military uses six of them were actually part of the patent holders I mean these people just vanished 
Uh, I just still don't believe that. I believe that that plane was taken. It was. It landed somewhere, maybe in a secret air base. Uh, uh, somewhere on some island in the middle of the, the ocean, and they take it underground, and then the, that information can be extracted from those folks, and then, you know, that's the end of the story. I just think this is the kind of thing that's going on, and that's not far fetched. I'm not talking sci fi. There's just too much. Look at all the hacking going on right now. I mean, uh, it seems like the Russians. They can pretty well figure out everything that's going on. The Chinese can take our submarine anytime they want to, uh, little drones, what have you, which I think is still, uh, I don't see how they could do that unless we give it to them. I still think maybe we gave it to them. Maybe that was a Trojan horse move, I'm not sure. But certainly, Mike, you have to agree with me that this is a technological war now. We're in a different w warfare, aren't we? Cyber war. We are, and you know what? <laughs> Even with MH370, it was so emotionally charged, nobody could see the obvious. Here's the obvious. Why in the world does any country have stealth technology, right? When you can have an aircraft that has no stealth technology just disappear from everybody's radar, right? right. What do you do? Turn off the transponder and you have stealth. That's ridiculous. They couldn't see this thing. Why would anybody build stealth aircraft? Right? For when when if all you had to do was turn off the transponder. Right. Your stealth. So nobody should ever buy the story that that plane just disappeared. No. Planes don't just disappear. No. You have to have and we spend billions of dollars in stealth technology. They could have saved some money by throwing the transponders out <laughs> and nobody could find them just like they couldn't find uh uh MH three seventy. Right. Um, so I don't buy that either. No. That should have been a red flag to many people. That's ridiculous. But it was so emotionally overcharged that uh, people didn't care about you know the theories anymore. They right. wanted the people to to, to be found. Right. That's ridiculous. Amen. And why would you? Why would you? Why would patent holders be killed? Ah. I'll tell you why. Because they're the ones with the ideas. They didn't kill them. These are the folks who have the genius minds right. who can come up. They're innovators. Right? right, and they just—it just so happened that the patent holders were on there. I'm the right? same they, plane. They're like gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And it just so happened that that took place, and then the plane goes missing. They abandoned the search. They never picked it back up again. The families are hurt. They're not giving the family answers. They scarcely—they they took a couple shifts looking for this thing that's supposed to be under the water a, a couple ships are you kidding are you with serious patent holders <laughs> and, and with the money involved with those i mean the public just bought that hook line right. and paper. now right. they make the story go away saying we can't find it that's the you know that that's so easy right. to do and and the public bought that though yes they did well, and, my, um, it, it, you're exactly right they just bought a hook line sinker because they've been buying all of the dummy down information that's been coming from the fake news media it's not the alternative media. It's the mainstream, mainstream fake news media. That is where your uh, this this uh, propaganda of convincing and dub and dummying down the general public. This is where it's coming from. And yet they want to call us conspiracy theorists and off the track. And look, there's some, there's a few loose screws running around in, in YouTube. I, I admit that. But overall, you know. There's some folks that are trying to say, look, common sense says this can't be. Are you serious? All right, Mike, let's get back to the wave. Let's get back to the wave. Okay, you said December, January, February. It's going to be like a point three on a scale to 1 to 20. Tell us what we can then expect to happen in the months after that. What And what are those things will happen to go along with your, your counter here, your chart? With a point three, with a point three to a point six going at, because January will probably be a point six, February point six, December point three. That influx of uh, cosmic radiation will cause uh, certain communications problems. Um, so everybody should expect some communications glitches that okay. nobody can quite explain. There's also going to be phenomena, more phenomena. Um, in the higher bands that people will be able to uh, capture with uh, certain optics and analyzing certain things, there, there are going to be different wave patterns introduced um, because these waves, the, the waves are uh, clusters uh, and they are overlapping one another, but they do have a definite waveform like a timed pulse, but they're all mingling and mixing in together. It's very difficult to explain without 
um, a person visualizing a simulation, a representation of what they look like. But we're going to see very strange happenings. Static electricity on the surface of the Earth, and certainly in the atmosphere, is going to begin to build. But one of the cautions that's going to be floating around is in the month of February, aircraft are going to have to be extremely careful in the flight. Um, because no one's quite sure how much um, how much of these charged particles the aircraft can uh, take if they if it happens to absorb right into the atmosphere, All right? And that's going to cause um, uh, a new type of St. Elmo's fire, if you will, at the high high um, higher altitudes, about um, about uh, flight level. 35,000 35, feet or, or higher. Will we so, see anything? We'll um, be able to see. I mean, because David Wilkerson, and maybe he saw this in the spirit realm, but in 1973 in his prophecy, the 41 things that he shared in 52 minutes, 40 of them have come to pass. The only thing that hasn't, he saw a cosmic storm in the heavens. Could he have been seeing something? I mean, will we physically see uh, something up there, or will this all be not visible to the naked eye. Well, let's just say it'll be... Now, this is what... This is the transition period. You know, I gave all those hints, Pastor, because truly this event's going to be unlike any other anybody has ever encountered. It's much more than seeing something, okay. right? Yeah. And you have to know the natures of, of uh, magnetic field lines. Well, let me give you an example. In the early days of the cosmonauts, when they sent animals and cosmonauts up there without replicating the Earth's magnetic field, right? right. It broke their neurological connections. They were crazy people. They fried their brains. Okay. They, they were. That, that's what happened, even with the animals that came back down. So they know that in any ship you send out there with, with life on it, you have to replicate the magnetic field of the Earth, or those charged particles are going to go right through anything it wants to go through, damaging DNA, cutting connections in your neurons and everything else. So you're talking about subatomic particles traveling through anything, right? right Knocking right. Uh, the electrons off of uh, any structure out there. So it can certainly mutate and deform things in an instant and destroy things. Right. So you have to replicate a magnetic field uh, so that those charged particles can't get through. That's what destroys neur the neurological connections. So imagine this. Imagine, and, and, and this is what makes the uh, people watching the magnetic field lines of the Earth, uh, they, they are going to be very informative because any changes in the magnetic field of the Earth is going to almost instantly lead or, or, or precede certain events on the face of this Earth. If those particles get through, um, due to a collapse in certain parts of the magnetic field. They're going right to the surface. They will penetrate the atmosphere because the atmosphere will be bombarded. We will start to see auroras first. And this is why I keep telling people to look for auroras. This is going to be one of those telltale signs. Once you see that and the magnetosphere continues to collapse, there's going to be an overwhelming of these very fast particles coming right down to the surface of the Earth. When this takes place, wherever the holes are, Anybody in those specific areas is going to have a break in their neurological connections, and they're going to go absolutely crazy. They're going to be like raving animals, and that's not a joke. Um, it's uh, it's a very real. They're going to start acting uh, like Nebuchadnezzar. They're going to start acting like Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible when he became like an animal. He didn't cut his fingernails, toenails. He lived in the he, you know he was just like a wild beast. I mean, they're going to. Start, you're saying that will start affecting. The mental capacity of individuals, do you see that happening right here on the planet, ourselves? Yes, in an instant, though, because what it was horrific what happened to those cosmonauts. And, um, it, it, I mean, horrific. Can you imagine a person turning to the other person, and they don't see that person as a person, but they're back to their animalistic behavior where they will either attack or begin to feed or eat or whatever they do, you know, just full of anything. Now, being under the flesh and without conscience or anything else, uh, that would be a horrific, that would be madness on the face of the earth. It would affect animals. It would affect all life on this planet. 
and um, people would begin to hallucinate. If it happens a little bit, once certain neurological connections are broken, people hallucinate. They're, no, they're schizophrenic. They're right. no longer in this realm of reality. Right. They start seeing things they never saw before. They, they, all sorts of things will begin to happen, so each person is going to see the world very differently than the other. Right? right? And people will react in these strange ways. Some people will see what they don't want to see. And it'll almost be like walking between two dimensions, which is very difficult to, for anybody to comprehend. But these are, they have, I don't really want to say this, but let's just say that they know this for a fact. Let's just say that's factual. That's right. not theoretical. This is factual. That so, is going to happen. All right, and, if, and all the... Mm, uh, go go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say through... Um, they know this for a fact, right? Anything, anything away from the public, there's no ethics committee wow. governing what they do. Anything away from the public, there are no limitations on what they can work with, right? And anything away from the public, people will be experimented on. And they absolutely 100% know what happens when, when uh, certain types of radiation are introduced. Uh, into the biocosmic radiation, which means you have to have a particle accelerator with biological tissue to see the absolute effects. You have to, so that it reaches the speed of light to replicate what happens in space naturally. So, Mike, this is so important for people to have their spiritual guard up. I mean, you got to start to understand, folks, you know, God's not a spare tire. He's not someone you just pull out always in a crisis, 911, call God. Your relationship with God has to be a daily relationship. You have to have a communication open between you and the Father so that you He hears your voice and you hear His and through the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Now imagine living in this world uh, without Christ in your life. Imagine the craziness, the chaos that's going to come. It's already on the earth, but it's going to get way, 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 way more. Not just the uh, cosmic or earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, all these things, but and but the hatred, the meanness, the wars, what about the craziness that's going to happen from the, this being inundated with these uh, waves of energy, cosmic uh, uh, waves that are disconnecting all the dots in your brain or what have you. If you're a Christian, you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a whole different, that's why we don't have any fear. We walk in faith and not fear. And but it's important to share this. I have to share this information. I do these broadcasts because I know there are thousands of people who will watch it, and m many of them are not saved. They're trying to live this life on their own. And as Christians, you say, "Okay, I get it. I get it. We got to we got to talk about this. We got to get it on the table. It is in the Bible. I'm ready to go." But man, my neighbor next door doesn't have a clue. My my, my brother-in-law is not saved. You know, my, my father-in-law is an atheist. I, I, yeah, he's right. we got to get this out there. So, Mike, it's important, I think, that the people understand that knowledge uh, is, is, is powerful. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, you know? So we need to understand what's going on here. You are anticipating. Can you say there's going to be more earthquakes, more volcanoes, more sinkholes? Do you foresee more apocalyptic th things happening over the next... Did you say it's going to take two years to get through this wave? Yes, two years. Two what do you years. see happening during those two so, years? Oh, just everything. Certainly in the month of uh, in the month of uh, June, where the value goes up to an eight. Uh, wow! Influx. Uh, it's going to be some severe change, and then um, uh, even after that eight, it, it, that coming November two thousand seventeen, it'll be up to a nine peaking at a 12 through that other year. Now, what will happen uh, at a 2, which is in March, what will happen at 2 in March? Well, this is when we begin to see some true signs of, of the real volcanism. You know, right now we've been fortunate, very fortunate, not to have had um, bad volcanism anywhere. We, we've been very fortunate, you know, because you're looking at... Uh, high temperature gases being released in volcanism, you know, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, fluorine, and chlorine, which can absolutely kill anything in its path. path. 
and, and you're also dealing with low temperature gases like the hydrogen sulfides and hydrochloric acid and, and, and um, uh, methane, right? All of this, these things going up into the atmosphere, settling on the surface of the planet through volcanism, a constant type of volcanism, which will cause an ash environment fairly quickly. Iceland is going to be a place to watch. I, I, I know that um, m many people who study geology and things of that nature, they, they're familiar with Iceland. That's one of the watches that uh, gives people the shivers, right, in Iceland. It is because there's a, the, um, in that region is a volcano that absolutely just messed up the northern hemisphere. I remember that. Uh, a long years time ago. ago. Yeah. And it's happening again. The ground is swelling. In fact, they have teams going back and forth, and they're measuring the altitude of the ground at a breakneck pace now, making sure that the equipment doesn't uh, uh, fail because it's swelling again. That's a monster underneath there, and it's it's coming alive. Again. Iceland. You know, it's coming alive. So, Iceland volcano is coming alive. It's a monster. Do you think, do, do, do we need to be concerned about Yellowstone uh, super volcano uh, or, or let's say uh, Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier out there in Washington? Well, Washington itself is a very interesting place. Um, the good part about Mount Rainier is that uh, it, it's so visible, the, the dynamics of Mount Rainier are so visible that it's not really a large concern, but right next to it underneath the ground. See, this is what gets me about public science. Okay. It does. It, it irritates me about public science is that they will get the populace focused on places they're, they're focusing on places where nothing is taking place. Okay. It, it allows the imagination to fly wild, right? And then people will focus all their God-given abilities on one place and not all places. Sometimes you have to step back from where we have been pointed to to look and just step back and say, Lord, show me. And, and that's all a person has to do is say, Lord, show me, and not be moved by their emotions and not be moved by their internal knowledge and, and their academia, but to let the Holy Spirit reveal to them, hey, this is a problem area. This is a problem area. And if they do that, they're going to start hitting the right spots because right now the majority of volcanism on this planet that's taking place is underneath the ocean and it's affecting the water and it's cooking the fish and it's causing poisonous gases to flow and, and, and um, um, go all throughout the waters where fish are actually just being, you know, the acidic properties of the ocean are, are ridiculous. Forget Fukushima. The volcanic gases and the activity that's coming from beneath the ocean is deadly. It's heating up the, the uh, South Atlantic and the South Pacific Ocean, and it's going to continue to do so. And that's like a conveyor belt. Now, when it rises high enough, our jet stream is going to change. The southern regions absolutely dictate our jet stream. Really? And that's in the dynamics of the atmosphere. Um, and it's, it's not well understood in the public either, which is another thing that gets me, because they hide certain data points. Oh, yeah. Um, for example, if, if uh, uh, the guy I heard Dutch sense, if he had access to some of those data points, he would absolutely figure it out. If, if uh, BP had access to those data points, he would absolutely figure it out. But they hide those data points, and, and so nobody's going to come forward and share those data points. They, they'll just bedazzle people with these... Uh, so are you uh, saying these sure, data points that will never happen? Are these data points classified? I mean, basically, they, 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 that guys like BP Earth Watch or guys like Dutch Sense, these kind of individuals, they they they're not getting. They can't get to all the meters. They can't get to see all the data points, all the act information. For if they did, they would figure this thing out. It would be, they would say, "Oh my, this is exactly what's going on." Uh, is there some things out there that that uh, other scientists, let's say? that uh, who have privilege to this information can see and they know what's coming yeah but they won't they won't say anything um, if they use here's how they get you here's how they get you the information itself doesn't have to be classified right okay. but if you use a classified uh, piece of machinery right yeah any information you obtain from that device cannot be published I see 
Yeah, that's how they get you. So if you take the data from that device and add it with your data, now your data is also classified. And if you break that classification, you're, you're just not going to make it, right? You're not yeah, gonna you're not going to make it. Gonna make it. The people, right. No, you, you just won't make it. Yeah. Which means that they have, um, the, the folks that have access to these things, believe me, they're not going to tell anybody about those data points. They're right. just not going to do it. They're being listened to, and, and they can talk about any other subject, but they better not get close to the absolute and actual data points. Well, let me, right? let, me ask and, you, um, let me ask you a question because, okay, I've had a couple visits from the NSA. They'll, ask, they'll say, you're saying certain things about information that uh, you, who, who's your source? Because you can't have that information unless you have access to certain things. My answer is, well, my source is the Lord. I mean, are you talking about things from the Bible? Because the Bible tells us certain things that are going to happen. I can't tell you how. I, I don't know how they're going to happen. I can read where it says it. He goes, and so the individual says, yes, but sometimes you say things from the Bible, then you get some kind of revelation is it or you're getting some kind of information on what the Bible's trying to say and that is matching information that that they know about and so the first question is this guy can't know that he's just some country hick preacher in Indiana so who, where is he getting his info that he's tying to the Bible and that is a question they keep asking you're saying that that uh, so God is revealing some of this to us spiritually, Mike. I mean, He just He just going to give give us little bits and pieces of this thing. We're we're figuring it out from the Bible, also. That's right. And, and, and again, if we can step back and just simply say, "Lord, please show me," because we can only go so far on the knowledge we obtain ourselves. But you know what, Pastor Paul said the same thing when I when I first heard you talk. I said the same thing. Where's this guy getting his stuff from? Yeah. That's, that's what I said. And then it, it kind of hit me quickly. I said, he doesn't know where he's getting this from. No. And then you began to confuse uh, certain individuals because they were saying the same thing. And so the fact is this. As we need to know something, the Lord will certainly give it to us. Yeah. Um, but what will it take? What in the world is it? Because you were talking about that... Uh, um, David uh, Wilkerson. David Wilkerson. His last prophecy didn't come about the cosmic storm. And you've heard me say the sky will turn to a golden color, right? Yes. Yes. So, what's going to happen when people see that? I can tell you what's going to happen. They're going to attempt to explain that away too. Yeah. When lots of people die on the face of this earth, they'll explain that away. When the childbirth stops, how are they going to explain that? Whoa! They're doing that already with diseases. They're yeah. doing it with diseases already. Yeah. When everybody's walking around sterile, and all of these things will be effects of, of cosmic radiation and a very different sun. The sun is going to change over the course of two years. It's 100% going to change. When these cosmic rays come in, they're going to change chemistry in the sun itself. So it's going to be very different and very hot. Right. I know that people think that an uh, ice age is coming, right? right? But I have to tell you, the sun is going to heat up so much that if anybody goes into the sunlight, you're going to have blisters within minutes. Well, that's in the Bible also, Mike. It's going to be so intense. That's in the Bible also. Men, It says men will be scorched with the heat. They will blaspheme God. They will literally curse his name over the intensity of the heat that will scorch them. You know, Brock, before the broadcast, Brock is producing today's show. He's doing a great job trying to keep up with me and you here with the graphics. I mean, I don't know how he's doing it. But he said to me, Dad, he said, ask him one question. These cosmic rays that are coming, this this galactical waves, what will it do to the integrity of the sun as we know it? That was an exact question. Integrity of the sun. And Mike, you're starting to tell us. Tell us how that changes the sun. What does that mean? The 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 meta, the nor, you know, it's morphing into something. What's going on? Well, the sun right now is at a pretty balanced. State. The sun, as you know, sends out a lot of particles, right? So yeah. what happens when it is flooded? When that, um, let's just say the heliosphere is pushed back so much, what's going to happen to the solar winds? They're going to be re-diverted back inwardly to the sun. There will be vortices forming around the sun, which will heat up everything. 
See, they don't want to tell you this, but global, since they argue about it anyway, and, and Trump is coming into power, global warming is, is a, although it is real, the planet is warming up, but it's not because of the reasons they have explained. There are very large radiation vortices forming around the Earth and Mars and all these other planets. Each and every single one of them is heating up. And uh, it's because the heliosphere is being pushed back. So somehow, and, and when this happens, all that, all that radiation is going to feed right back into the sun. So what happens when the radiation that the sun puts out gets fed back into the poles of the sun? Yeah. It's going to become twice as powerful. Right? right? It's going to begin to change its own. You're going to have an introduction of changed particles. There are reactions taking place in the sun, right? Very balanced reactions. Right. And so when this stuff is fed back into the sun, we're going to see changes. It will become so bright. Uh, uh, people, they should have noticed, certainly in the last two years, that, that lux, or let's just say the intensity of brightness of the sun, has gone up at least uh, 230% is gone up. Yeah. But that equates also to infrared has gone up a little bit, too. So as the brightness of the sun increases, so will the heat of the sun reach the Earth more and more. It's going to go up at least, I mean, it's going to become uh, at least um, up to a factor of five, I guess you could say, right? Five times brighter than what it is right now it will be in a very short time span, which means we're going to feel heat that means in the sunlight it's going to be incredibly hot but away where there's shade it's going to be incredibly cold we're going to have a freeze and 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 a um, uh, oven right here on the earth even with the atmosphere and then as this heat and this cold begins to cause turbulence in the earth we're going to have high winds we never ever saw before Wow! So here we go. The Earth. What about the energy of the core of the Earth from the waves of energy? Isn't that going to affect the core of the Earth, causing the rock to start to melt, the magma start to move, which obviously has to create. Uh, if, if the inside of the Earth's core is imploding or or is igniting, then there's. I would think, and I'm not a scientist here, but I would think there would be more sinkholes, more volcanic eruptions. And and uh, like the Earth is kind of like trying to pull apart from the heat. I mean, is that kind of is that part of? I mean, because I can read what it says in Second Peter chapter three. You know, I can read what it says going to melt with a fervent heat. But is that because of the heavens are shaking, which Jesus said is going to happen? Stars going to be falling from the sky like a fig tree casting its untimely fig. The moon's going to turn to blood. Cause it's going to be. It's going to definitely have a red. It's going to definitely be reddish. The sun is going to be ashamed. Some kind of sucking away of the helium and the and the hydrogen away, like it did in the days of the plague of Moses. But for the Earth to melt with a fervent heat, it's not only from the sun, but doesn't it also com explode? Not explode, but uh, implode from within. Well, we're going to have magma issues um, with this radiation coming in absorbed at the poles. It's going to be overwhelmed. By the way, when it's absorbed at the poles, it goes right into the interior of the planet. Is what it does, and goes and all that radiation goes inside the planet, right? Yeah. And so inside the planet is moving westward, right? If you looked at the North Pole down upon the Earth, everything is moving clockwise, yeah. right? And that's causing the magnetic field around the Earth. So what we're going to have is a highly energized. In the interiors of the Earth are going to be highly energized. Here's the problem. Simply because you energize or heat up the components of the Earth, it does not mean that the interior of the Earth is going to spin faster. No, it means quite the contrary. It means there will be interruptions in the motion of, the, of that molten iron and different uh, metals inside the Earth. So you're going to have uh, obstructions that will begin to slow down the motion of the interior of the earth causing our magnetosphere greater problems until it reaches the point of chaos now at this point while it's doing so it's going to be expanding heat expands it's going to melt more rock as it heats up 
as it melts more rock, you're going to have breaches in the Earth's crust, which means magma is going to start pouring up from everywhere. And a process of this, a piece of this is already forming in the southern hemisphere, right? Now, it's causing what are called volcanic pillows underneath the uh, South Pacific um, in some parts of the uh, South Atlantic, it's causing these volcanic pillows, which means that that magma comes out, condenses very fast, turns into rock very fast, and it looks like pillows are down there. But what it's also doing is releasing gases, killing sea life around it and everything else for a while, and it's heating up the water, right? Because you have warming waters in the southern regions of the Earth, warming, and they're getting hotter and hotter. Do you remember that heat plume that was moving through yeah. the north, uh, uh, from the south to the North Pacific? Yes. And come to find out, um, uh, it was there's huge. Been nickel deposits found yes. at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Nickel deposits. You know, nickel. That's crazy. And the North Atlantic crack is becoming bigger and bigger. And so, what's happening is we have an expansion event inside of the Earth with all this additional heat. These, these, uh, the introduction of this breaching cosmic radiation that all is going through the heliosphere is going to be absorbed inside the planet. Inside more than this planet, it's going to be absorbed from the sun. Now, remember, our orbit is controlled by the sun. It, that's a balancing act too, and we're not in a perfectly cylindrical orbit. We're we're not going around in a perfect round circle. It's an elliptical orbit that we have. The Earth does, so it's being squashed and squished and bent and stretched and everything else. That elliptical orbit is going to become uh, a little more exaggerated. Do you know what that means? That means the Earth, like a jello ball, is going to be squishing in and out. That means tectonic shifting, like yeah, you know, like all crazy. Right. So there'll be earthquakes. That's what it means. Yeah. Well, let's look what it says in Second Peter chapter three for a minute, Mike. It says this, folks. Verse. This is Second Peter chapter three, verse three. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, saying, "Where is the promise of his coming, Begley? Where is your Jesus that you say is coming?" Here come the scoffers, the mockers, and they will be from all walks of life, folks. They will be from the scientific community. They'll be from the mass media. They will be your neighbor next door. They'll be your brother-in-law. They'll be the guy you work with. Okay, these they will be from the church. They'll be pastors saying Jesus isn't really coming. And we need to turn to this globalization, this, this one world solution. All right? So they'll say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, or since they died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. We know that's not true. Mike is telling you the earth is going to go through a transformation. The cosmos, the heavens are shaking. Things are going to change. And then verse 3, for this they willingly are ignorant of. They know better, but they will convince themselves and that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world was then was, being overflowed with water, perished. That was during the flood of Noah. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. The day is one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Now notice this but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, when you least expect it, in the which, here's what's going to happen the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. I am not making this up. Mike, the very things you've been explaining to us, how the effects upon the earth and the sun, which affects the earth again, all these things, Peter saw it. How did Peter know this? He was a fisherman. He was a fisherman, crying out loud. How does he know the cosmic transformation 
2,000 years later. It's because the same anointing of, upon him is upon the body of Christ today. And the, uh, there's 2,000 people watching right now live at YouTube. Exactly 2,000 people. I want you to know something. How many of you have your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you going to be standing here twiddling your thumbs when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and you say, What in the world was I doing? I had all this knowledge. I had all this information. I was hanging out in the chat room. I heard Mike from around the world. He explained to me the actual end time, and I'm still not right with God. And so, Mike, I'll give you one last word. I mean, this thing is real, isn't it? What's happening? It's real. Yes, it is real. And um, uh, what a word, is real. Yeah, it is real. <laughs> and the implications of this thing are, you know, they're going to be known by everybody. Uh, the conversation is going to change. No one's going to have to prove anything. But, you know, I would just ask that people step back for a minute and then ask your Father in Heaven through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ what direction you should go in. We shouldn't have fear, Pastor Paul, because... We're covered. If we abide in Christ, Amen. we've given our life to Christ, then don't try to save your own life because your life is not yours anymore. Amen. It is in the hands of Christ who has already overcome. The victory is in Him, and we too have that victory. But our job is to spread the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. But also, the Lord said, watch, therefore, and pray. He yeah. told us to watch that we may know these events that are coming upon the earth that we may calm another brother and a sister. Amen. That's why we should know. And we can sound that alarm and say, hey, the time is coming close. And the Lord likes it when he finds someone giving meat in due season. That means give a steak in the time where a person needs a steak and go ahead and get some bacon when it's time to get bacon. But to give the word of God the proper word of God from the Holy Spirit in the season in which people need it because we have to be ready always and if a person abide in Christ all these things that are coming upon the world have been foreshadowed they've yeah. been foreshadowed sporadically to wake us up to get our attention now we have to wake up before the world does yeah. because once we are awake then all these things will come upon this earth but we still stand and abide in Christ and within Christ is a victory. But the people who don't abide in him, absolutely. Because, Pastor, I have to say this. If you abide in, if I abide in Christ, then I'm also abiding at the throne of grace. Amen. And there is no misery at the throne of no. grace. There is no bondage at the throne of grace. No. There's no bondage in Christ. And here's case in point. It's where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. That's not bondage. No. There's liberty Freedom. where the Spirit of the Lord is. So then we have liberty if we abide in Him, not bondage, not anger, not fear, not all these things that the world does express, right? Right. And even like I'm talking about these waves, I know it's, I know people, some people don't want to believe it, some people just flat out don't believe it, you yeah. know, but and and for all those people you know don't defend me you know people will see things they'll see the truth as the truth as comes. It develops and science is not a hundred percent but i'm charged to do what the lord has given me to do and so guess what doing that with a good conscience with an honest heart i have no problem with anybody doubting talking about me because i have to answer to my father in heaven and my lord jesus of nazareth oh and by the way he is the lord of my life he is the king of my life and i have to answer to him, but I'm bound to do those things for him that edify you, the brothers and the sisters in Christ. And so we don't intentionally try to speak hogwash, right? No. We speak the truth as the Lord gave it to us. But the preparations are real. Yeah. Of all the things in the Bible, the most, the things spoken of the most was the destruction coming near the end. Yeah. And do you know, Pastor, in the New Testament it says this, that us, anybody born after Christ, it's in the book of Hebrews, anybody born in that time of Christ, you have been born in the last days. The last days began with Jesus of Nazareth. Right. And he's the only one that opens the seals. That's now, right. if Jesus is worthy to open the seals, why would we be afraid of the things inside of the seals? Because our lives belong to him. Amen. He's opening those seals, but we belong to him. So why? No, no need no for fear. fear. But we can certainly encourage another person in their fear. Amen. But we can't be fearful and encourage anybody. So that's no. the point of this thing, because it's going to be very real. Very Amen. real. Mike, awesome.
awesome information. I'm going to be coming back to you because, you know, December 26th is just around the corner. A few days after, or there may be some more manifestations that BP Earth Watch and others may may encounter, may see. But I'm hearing you say that over it's over a period of time, uh, we're going to be seeing more and more and more of this stuff beginning to manifest. And so, hey, thank you for such a powerful, positive word. Is, is, is with the best of your ability and knowledge and the freedom that we have to share with us the, the truths of the end times and to, and to get people ready and your testimony of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for coming on today. Thank you, Pastor Paul, and God bless you. God bless you.